Hello, you're watching The Interview on France 24. I'm Catherine Nicholson. With me today, uh, the Vice President of the European Commission, Maro Shevchovic, the European Commissioner uh, from Slovakia, uh, a Russian speaker and former Moscow resident, uh, having lived there as a student from 1985 to 90 during the last days of the USSR. Maro Shevchovic, thank you very much for being with us and giving us your perspective today. Thank you very much for your invitation. I'd like to start off, if I may, with the most recent developments overnight into Friday, the Russian military uh, taking control of uh, Ukraine's biggest nuclear reactor. Uh, the Russian military also uh, have control of several areas of terrain in Ukraine. Do you see the Ukrainian military holding on to their territory or is more outside help needed? I think that it's very difficult to comment on the uh, uh, details of the of the military operation. But what I can say is that a country with such a tragic history like uh, Chernobyl, and you, you said that uh, uh, I uh, studied in, uh, in in Russia and Moscow, it was exactly at the time of uh, Chernobyl, Chernobyl disasters. And we have seen that how many years uh, and how many casualties and what have been the tragic consequences of that uh, nuclear uh, disaster. And therefore, I'm absolutely astonished uh, that even today uh, there could be something like artillery shelling of uh, the biggest nuclear power plant in Europe. I, I think that uh, the all international community consider this absolutely irresponsible. Uh, of course, all international uh, uh, organization system is, 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 is mobilized. We, of course, are following very closely the recent reports of international atomic uh, agency and this is just yet another proof of uh, uh, what kind of uh, approach uh, the Russian military are taking in this absolutely uh, senseless war and therefore I think it's very important that uh, we as a European Union stay united are absolutely mobilized mm -hmm. in providing all the assistance that the Ukraine and the Ukrainian courageous people need. Well, indeed, uh, Volodymyr Zelensky wants uh, the West to send war planes to help Ukraine. The European Commission, uh, the European Union has already approved sending uh, 500 million euros worth of emergency weapons. Uh, could this include those war planes that he's now asking for? I have to say that uh, if you look at uh, the, the, the trajectory, the world, the Europe and the European Union has passed over the last uh, 10 days, it's just uh, clearly unbelievable. Because if you would have these interviews 10 days ago, I, I, I wouldn't be able uh, to give you confirmative answers that we are ready to use the EU budget and, and the peace facility for uh, providing lethal uh, weapons uh, uh, to Ukrainians. But when we see this, uh, uh, this nerve-wracking and heartbreaking pictures coming from Ukraine, where the innocent civilians are just shelled indiscriminately by the, by the rocket launchers and how it serves, I think it's absolutely necessary to do everything everything we, we can to provide uh, with the armaments, ammunition, lethal lethal weapons. Uh, uh, and I know that uh, uh, the, uh, the providing the, or, or the clean, uh, uh, safe sky for, for Ukrainians is something very, very important. But this is a very tough military decision because we are not party. Uh, to, to, this, to this war. We do not want to, to escalate this conflict into possible uh, uh, EU or NATO, Russia military confrontation. But we are looking for all other ways uh, how to help Ukrainians with, with, with uh, weapons which would help them uh, to boost their air defense. Uh, and, and just on that sending of uh, weapons, uh, of course, uh, Vladimir Putin has been arguing that he invaded Ukraine uh, in response to threats or, or threatening posturing from the West, from NATO. Uh, this is a historic first by the EU sending weapons. Is it something that could, in fact, antagonise Russia, play into Putin's narrative? I think that in this particular case, we have to be very strong, united and... Uh... Uh, we are really in um, a new era. As I said, 10 days ago, this would not be possible. But uh, who would uh, really believe, especially after this uh, multiple reassurances coming from, uh, from a Russian president himself, that he's not going to invade the Ukraine, and then he sends the, the, the division to this, uh, to this peaceful, peaceful cities. And when I see how the public opinion has changed, I was following... The, the, the debate in, in Bundestag, uh, when I see that countries like, like Sweden, like, like Switzerland, are joining our, our efforts and are, are ready uh, to provide even military assistance, I mean, it's quite clear that this is uh, uh, earth-shattering and we are in a new moment where uh, simply 
EU has to demonstrate that we are on the good side of the history, that we cannot simply look how the, the people in our neighboring country are, are massacred by the highly efficient militaries. And therefore, I think we uh, crossed as many thresholds and we simply also draw the line that that's it. You know that we are ready to defend ourselves. We are ready to fight for our values and we are also ready to do it in, in, in these ways, which uh, clearly uh, was not possible just a few few days ago. So if there is any belief in Russia that we as a Europeans would be divided, would be softened. I mean, it will not happen, not today, not uh, uh, tomorrow, not next week and not next year, because we'll be really standing very steadfast with the Ukraine and with the resolve to, to protect our European way of life. We've seen uh, great expressions of solidarity from the EU towards Ukraine, uh, particularly earlier in the week when the, the president of Ukraine made an emotional appeal to the European Parliament for support. Uh, now, he says he wants Ukraine to get immediate accession to the EU via a new special procedure. We have heard uh, hesitant responses to that from various EU member states. What do you think is the, the most likely path now for Ukraine, which obviously does have a will to be closer to the European Union in some way? We just concluded uh, the discussions about uh, the uh, uh, European ministers uh, of the EU, and, and uh, I have to say that uh, I'm in this business already for quite uh, quite some time. I never seen such a remarkable unity and resolve to to help the Ukraine and to really send very strong uh, political uh, signals uh, to our uh, Ukrainian uh, friends uh, and and partners. I think it's quite clear that uh, they are indeed dying for. Uh, European values, uh, they're, they're dying uh, for, for being uh, part of Europe. And uh, uh, I think it's very clear, and it was expressed from all uh, ministers who participated in this discussion, this question uh, deserves our strategic attention. There is a need for clear uh, political signal that, uh, of course, uh, all, over some time, um, the Ukrainian definitely uh, belongs with us, uh, that its people are one of us, and uh, that uh, uh, we want uh, them uh, them in. I think now it's a uh, time for strong political messaging. We can discuss the, the mechanics uh, later. But what uh, the people of Ukraine need right now is uh, is encouragement, mm. is is assistance, and it's of course any kind of help we can provide them with. Well, speaking of help uh, that the EU can provide to uh, Ukrainians and people in Ukraine, uh, refugees, of course, coming out of Ukraine in huge numbers. Uh, the UNHCR says more than a million have fled. Uh, of course, your home country, Slovakia, uh, one of the countries they're most likely to come into. Um, are the EU states prepared to receive this huge influx of people at this point? I have to say that they are, and I, I was uh, really personally on behalf of the the, the whole uh, commission really expressing my gratitude to the to the new frontline states, to, to Poland, uh, to my home country, Slovakia, to, to Hungary, to Romania, but also to other countries who are, I would say, in, in, in second line, line, like the Czech Republic, Germany, France, and, and others, because the, the unity and solidarity here is, is absolutely uh, impressive. I have to share with you that I was particularly taken by the image which was described by our uh, Romanian uh, colleague, was describing the situation at, at the border like, uh, I would say, a uh, gi uh, gigantic kindergarten. That you see these uh, young uh, mothers with the babies, with the, with the small children, who these countries are really doing their utmost to accommodate. As, as you rightly pointed out, it's already one million uh, Ukrainian uh, women mm -hmm. and, and, and children who are arriving to the uh, uh, European uh, mm -hmm. peaceful, uh, safe uh, countries. And I have to say that uh, uh, there is remarkable solid solidarity uh, from the local people on the ground uh, to help them because they see the tragedy, they see the need, and we from the uh, European Commission side are ready to help them mm -hmm. with our emergency assistance, with shelters, with food, uh, with medicaments, but also with, uh, with financial assistance. Uh, an important aspect of this story, uh, though, is about who exactly gets what protection. I'm sure it's no surprise to you that uh, our reporters who were on the Ukraine-Poland border, for example, have witnessed uh, racist incidents uh, with uh, people coming uh, to the border and telling Africans uh, not to come in, even trying to attack them. Uh, there is a question mark about whether uh, all 
residents of Ukraine will be allowed to have protection status in the EU. At this point, when we speak, it looks like short stay visas, uh, as in for people, for, uh, students from Africa, for example, would not get this protection. Uh, can you clarify this? Is there discrimination going on? Yes, I can, I can clarify it. And I and thank you very much for this question, because I really would like to refuse, refute uh, this fake news. I think we immediately clarified it with our Ukrainian partners, but also with all frontline countries. And what was apparently happening there, that if it comes to the war situation, of course, the, 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 the women and children have the priority. And uh, that was the, the, the first uh, people who really needed to get uh, to those buses to be transported uh, to the European Union. And then uh, the, 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 the students followed immediately. We have seen the dramatic increase, and it's really in south ends of the foreign students uh, uh, coming uh, to Central and Eastern European countries. Uh, nobody is discriminated against. And uh, let's just imagine that we had in uh, 10 days something like 1 million people crossing. Of course, uh, this never happened before. Uh, there might be, you know, some issues here, some issues there. But we've been reassured by Ukrainians, by all our frontline experts, and we are beefing up our Frontex uh, presence there. There was no discrimination. There was definitely no racism. And we did our uh, utmost uh, uh, to make sure that the students would have safe passage uh, uh, to Europe. And we are already also working with their home countries uh, uh, to also organize the flights uh, which would uh, take them uh, back uh, to their countries until hopefully the peace is uh, restored uh, in Ukraine and they can come back uh, as a students. And uh, as you rightly pointed out, uh, uh, the Ukrainians with biometric uh, passports, uh, they are, of course, under the uh, visa-free uh, regime, so mm -hmm. they, they can travel uh, freely. But we also adopted this temporary protection system uh, exactly for those mm -hmm. who simply had to flat uh, the apartments from one hour into another. They do not have mm -hmm. all the documents, but we are going to uh, create special conditions for them to, uh, to provide mm -hmm. them with a shelter, to provide them with the health care, to make sure that their children could study, and also that eventually, mm -hmm. over the time, when they would absorb this dramatic shock, that they could also work in the, in the European Union, and the system would work initially at least for one year, and then we will see, but the solidarity is enormous, and I'm sure mm. there will be a solution uh, to this uh, enormous challenge. Maro Shevchevich, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you very much for the invitation. Thanks to you for watching. See you soon here on France 24.